Yes, this is Turno, and this is how I prepare for a track. So uh, I always have a template. Uh, I think it's a lot more easier. Um, as I've been doing this, uh, yeah, nearly 10 years now, over 10 years, like any way to kind of make the process a lot more easier and user friendly and let the creative juices keep flowing, like I, I will <laughs> definitely use. So having a template, it can be as simple as just having a, um, a ready-made template with, I don't know, a number of VSTs you use, your buses, your masking, whatever, but just any way that can help in the process. So I'm gonna show you my template now, um, and it's something I use every single time. Um, I do update it kind of sometimes because, uh, I don't know, I might have a, um, a period where I like to use certain certain sounds, uh, um, et cetera, et cetera, and I might change because I might, I don't know, just like everyone does, get new sounds or, uh, be more veering towards a certain simps, et cetera, et cetera. Just to keep things fresh as well, because I mean, the more you use the same kind of template, the more it can get a bit boring, but the most of it stays the same. Um, so like, if you have a look at this, so I've got here, uh, I, I use Logic, as you can see, I also use track stacks, which is very important to me uh, in regards to just kind of keeping everything condensed and organized. As you've seen in my last project, I've had like over 111 channels in there, so it can get very mental uh, when you're coming to mix down stages. You want to be able to focus on certain elements, certain uh, areas, so for instance, drums, bass, intro, etc. So if I just go through these, like this is my drums, so I use it for a folder, so just again, just to condense and make things easier when it comes to mix downs. Uh, I can just solo the drums, or I can mute the other elements and I've got the drums playing alone, rather than having to find audio 45 or whatever it is. So that's another good point as well, is naming everything, because that's very important. Like, I know a lot of you are messy producers, but when it comes to um, the end process or the mix down process, I find actually naming everything is vital. Like, I'm just like you guys, don't worry. Like when it comes to creative part, just slapping everything in. But I think uh, the next session is very important to naming everything, just for your own head really, man, because otherwise it can get nuts. So um, yeah, I've just got some simple audio files in here and I've just named them kick, snare, hat, ride, open hat, break, shaker, aimen, crash and reverse crash. This stuff, so I've got a basic like, I don't know, no basic number of elements that I'll use in my drums. Like again, this is very wishy-washy, but yeah, this is just a basic kind of template as you know, as, as we're speaking about. So um, the base one, this is like a number of presets which I like, which I'm using at the moment, for instance. Like, I mean, these are quite old now. I probably used it back in the last year. Um, but yeah, so I've got like a Vulcan. Falcon here, which is like a sampler, uh, which I use a lot, resample. I've got another Reese. A Reese, which I probably use in every track, like it's probably the one of the most, well, it is the most famous drum bass noise, bass, sorry. So um, yeah, yeah, I love a Reese. Uh, and then these are just like, again, just other simps and stuff. I've got Contact here, which is again, another sampler. Just some interesting sounds I like at the current moment. Obviously, everyone loves a womp. Oh, that's just... Again, massive. So as you can see, a range of different VSTs and processes like samplers and it's not like one thing go to. I like to kind of keep it quite vast and, and I use quite a lot of things. So um, yeah, I mean, some of these sounds are, I, I wouldn't wouldn't really use anymore, but it's good to have like just your basics in it. It's a template at the end of the day. You can change all these around, but just have like a, a group of sounds which you know you pretty much go to and you can st good starting points where it just means that when you're when you're getting in creative mode you've got them there to go so i mean i've also got um a channel which is quite cool it's just called plugins to use and i've just got loads of like random plugins on that i like like whether they be i don't know there's a lot of like modulation plugins like ring modulation a resonator I put, I've got Portal on there, Wave Folder, Texture, which is really good at adding like kind of texture to your sounds, funny enough. Um, and I've got a Shaper Box, Filter Box, just, just loads of kind of cool plugins, multi-effects plugins that can just, I don't know, if you're stuck for inspiration, can really help kind of get thing, get the juices flowing if you like. Um, so that's quite important. So, I, and then we go on to intro. So intro is just a collection of things that I will potentially use for an intro. So for instance, I've got um, contact because I really like the, the strings or the flutes or whatever else, the brass side of things inside there. Um, I mean, Arcade, which again is by output. I've not used in quite a while, but it's quite a cool plugin where you have like a number of, uh, I don't know, organic, can't really hear it, organic kind of sounds. 
And you can also download things off the cuff as well. So it's quite fresh. I've not used it in quite a while, but again, at the time, it's something that you, that you, that you want to incorporate into your tracks. It might be a new plugin you bought, or it might be something you like using. So just keep it in there. Rave generator, which is a, a, a favorite between a lot of artists, which is basically just sampled loads of rave stuff like from, um, uh, yeah, from, from all the classic rave songs. There's, there's loads of stuff in here, man. So yeah, I definitely would advise to have a look at that if you don't know what that is. Uh, I've got like an, o, an OPX thing here, which is again, is a really good old plugin. Um, this thing's bugging out. One sec. <laughs> Maybe don't get Rave Generator. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still bugging out. Right, we're gone. Uh, right, so yeah, this is OPX Pro, which is again, I think it's bait. I don't want to... I don't want to get things wrong, but I think it's based on, is it Oberheim or something like that? I don't know, I don't know exactly what the name is, but um, I'm sure one of you will correct me if it's wrong. Um, so yeah, this is like, again, just, just a really good analog synth, like, and it has all of the old sounds in, all the old 80s sounds, all the old sounds. So I use this a lot as well for just like the, the getting the beds, the bed of the, the track for the intro started. Uh, and I've got a, a Falcon here, which is uh, an amazing plugin by UVI, which is, yeah, crazy, crazy deep. Like I would advise to watch tutorials on it, but you can do so much on it. It has presets. It's got really in-depth sounds. You can make your own sounds on it. It's a sampler. Like it can, it can do everything, and the sound quality of it is amazing. So I use that a lot. So um, yeah, that's my intro. Then I've got some audio files, some audio channels, sorry, to um, just add in effects or et cetera, et cetera, because I like to use audio along with MIDI. Uh, and I also have a hardware folder here because as you can see, I've got quite a lot of hardware and it's all kind of connected through this patch bay, which is all named, um, which means I can just, as you can see here, Roland, Yamaha, Moog, obviously the Moog is not here anymore. <laughs> oh no, sorry, we've got a new Moog. Um, but the Moog, uh, it, was a, it was the sub 30, 32, 37, 32, one or two. Um, but yeah, now I've got a Moog, so I've changed it. Um, so yeah, just 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 makes life a lot easier um, when it comes to wiring them up. Again, that's something that can be really uh, long when you're if you're in the vibe and you want to plug this in here to try and get the synth working. And by the time you plug it all in, the vibe's gone. So just spend an hour setting up a template track just with everything in you need and it makes life a lot easier. Uh, also, I've got my buses and sends set up, which I do use quite frequently. So I don't know, just for example, I have um, a sub bus, which I use a lot uh, for my sub stuff. Like I've got um, a bass, bass mids, which is around somewhere. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, I've got um, percussion bus because I always put all my percussion to the percussion bus and then I will route that to a final drum bus. So. Again, my drum bus is here. Every, everything I would use on a day-to-day -day basis in my tracks is set up in here. And again, obviously they'll change as things develop uh, and as you learn more things. But again, it means that you have everything set up. It means you can get to the end result quicker. It means life's a lot easier and a lot more flowing when it comes to the creative process. So for me, it's very important. Um, what else have I got in here? Um, I've got some mid, well, some effects for, I don't know, bass for instance. So, I mean, this invaders is a, is a this invader send sorry is uh, is from my track invaders which I made a while ago but um, it is really cool like it's just distortion I've got like a chorus on it uh, some of, some of the some of the uh, settings are quite radical but it adds a real real openness if I just show you briefly I'm gonna put it on my the Reese if I add it to this you'll notice it really does really does give um, a real width to the track or to the sound, sorry. Um, as you can really hear that, it really gives like a, a stereo field opens up, especially if the sound is quite dull, like the Reese is quite big. If I was to put a filter on it, for instance, and then add the, you can hear it kind of, it's more effective. So I uh, yeah, just, just, just ways, just, just a couple channels that I can just go to, just anything to make life easier. So, and then obviously my master channel as well. Like I always produce uh, with my master settings on. I haven't got much on, to be honest with you. Like the virtual mix bus is literally just adding a little bit of top sheen. That's it, literally it. So, I mean, that, I normally turn that off when I start because it all depends on what the track sounds like at the end from what I need to do to it. But more or less, I'm straight away, got the multimeter on, um, in this screen here, and I'm constantly looking at it. I know where things have got to hit, so I just think, look, let's go straight for it. Uh, and there's no, there's no point kind of, I don't know, 
mixed in quiet, in my opinion. I just want to kind of get to the end goal uh, uh, straight away. So it just makes life a lot easier. Um, but that, that way really does help my workflow. Uh, another thing that does really help is just having kind of a sample pack uh, of your sounds, really. So, like, I mean, I've been doing this for absolute years. Like, I've got, like, finished track stems here, which I've had for... I don't know, going back, uh, what it says here, 2013, man. So as you can imagine, I've got loads to choose from. Um, I don't know, let's just click in and random. Invaders parts. So in this one here, I've got all the parts from Invaders, whether it be a little break I made, clap, drum effects. I can obviously just drag back into a project and... I mean, you've done the hard work before, so why not just reuse them or bounce them? It means in future you've got a sample pack to sell as well if anyone hits you up. But also it means you can use it in collabs, just just for so many reasons, your own tunes. Like, I mean, not everyone wants to spend five or, five or six hours creating drums from scratch every time. <laughs> so if you spent that time ready, you know what I mean, making drums on Serum or whatever it is, just, just reuse them again, man, like, and layer up with new sounds. So here's just like bass riffs as well. I've got the full bass riff here, which I can then resample. Resample any time and just take parts from it as well, etc., etc. So I'd advise that massively. I also do um, frequently kind of spend days, uh, I don't know, running stuff through my Culture Vulture and my SSL. Like this is really, really good for distortion. And the SSL combined with it is is really good, um, just because it's got everything on it that a channel that a channel sorry a channel strip would have. So you've got your compression, your gates, you got your line in, you have got filters, you have got EQs, etc. So you, so that paired with the culture vulture, you can really kind of um, contain the madness of this thing here because it does it does it does really go out of hand sometimes. But together they make a really good couple, uh, and I I I spend sometimes. Yeah, days where I might not be feeling the most um, creative, just kind of going through drums. And again, like it, just just to give you an example, like this is my latest, the latest ones I've been going through, and they, they might not sound like much, but you can tell they have really got that hardware kind of grit to them. Even the white noise or the, the feedback you hear uh, from recording it in, or and again, when you're doing this, like. You, you, you're doing it with an analyzer just to kind of tr try and get it to a point that you need to get so you know it's loud enough just to, again so when you want to work you can just drag it in if I drag this in this is more than ready to go like um, because I've already done all the processing including in here if you look at the analyzer that minus five is generally like the loudest point of of a track like you don't you wouldn't really go uh, much above that because it starts to distort and as you can see I mean the whole frequency spectrum is taken <laughs> already so it means you know what I mean all, all I've got to do is add a couple of elements cut them up and I've done the hard work already I'm not fighting for loudness straight away like and that's the great thing about just preparing um, before you kind of get stuck in man so hopefully it's been insightful and this is the way I kind of um, yeah prepare and start for track